Yes, he is. He is, you know, a, a second in a big field at Leopardstown over Christmas. I, I quite like that angle as well. You know, he's, he's coped with a rough and tumble. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's done race over further than three miles, isn't yeah. he? I mean, that, it might suit him, it might not. I don't know. I thought he was one of the paddock picks. I thought he looked great condition. How about Cruz Linen? Well, I can see the angle for him. He ran pretty well with the ultimate bar one mistake, and he's got form round here. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure he's going to want an absolute slog. Yeah, I'm, I'm of the same opinion. Let's have our latest betting update. We've now got joint favourites. Many clouds in the last summer, I think. Well, after drifting right out to 12 to 1, Many Clouds has reasserted himself at the top of the market. I think he's pretty certain they're going to go off joint the last Samurai Many Clouds. The moves late on, surprisingly for me, Hollywell, Goon Yellow well back and shut the front door. The runners have been called towards the tape and they're off to a first timer. They're off and racing the Krabby's Grand National 2016. And as they stream down towards the first fence, St. Tar is one of the first to show. Along with Silvinaco, Conti, Double Ross is also pretty prominent. The Rev and last year's winner, Many Clouds aren't too far away. Then came Rocky Creek and Guniella and Wonderful Charm. And they're about to rise at the first. And it will be St. R and Double Ross who will share the lead as they go over the first of the 30 fences. All the leaders are safely over. We do have one down. Hadrian's approach has gone at fence one and seat of the rider. On towards fence number two and Double Ross will have the lead over St. R has crossed it in second place and first lieutenant is down and Holywell is down at the back of the field. So three have gone as they come towards fence number three. Arkin making ground towards the outside and Arkin will lead the run for Kelly who jumped that one in second place and they've all safely got over the open ditch and quickly they go towards fence number four and it is Arkin followed by the Romford Pele and then Double Ross who jumps that fence in third position. St. Tar was over in fourth. The Druid's nephew made a mistake. Many Clouds has got a good position on the inside running rail in the sheepskin noseband, about 7th or 8th. He's tracked there by La Rev. So Vinialco, Conti and Katenka are upside to him as they take the fence before Beaches. Arkin was the leader over it. Not on landing from the Druid's nephew, who's two-thirds of the way back. And Home Farm was slightly hampered by a loose horse. And now they make their way down towards Beaches. It's Arkin from the Romford Pele, Double Ross and R. The last samurai in a noseband. Rule the world with a blue cap. Arkin the first to take off and land jumps it. Well, leaders get out over it safely. Bad mistake by Vix Canvas. Somehow he managed to keep his feet. On towards Foynaven they go. They're being led by Arkin from Double Ross and the Romford Pele. The last Samurai and St. R. Many Clouds has got a good position on the inside. Rule the world and Katenko, Sauviniaco, Conti, Larev shut the front door. Morning Assembly Pendra, Gil Gamboa and Guniella in midfield as they come to the canal turn. Arkin goes to it just ahead of Double Ross. They take off and land together. Romford Pele has unseated them when tracking the leaders, watching the stragglers go over it on his own as well, back with Home Farm, the Druid's nephew, just a par and cruise Lennon as they take Valentine's. It was Double Ross and Arkin who were the first two over Valentine's, at which all the leaders jumped it safely on his own, made a mistake at the back of the field. He's last but one and Home Farm is the back marker. Still right there on the inside is Many Clouds is going to jump the next fence in a roundabout fifth or sixth place. Once again, all the leaders safely over. Union East make quite a bad mistake. So it is Arkin who leads them now on towards the open and ditch to in second place is Double Ross and then St. R is in third and the last Samurai jumped it in fourth shut the front door was over in fifth there was a mistake by Guniella and also a mistake right out the back of the field by Cruz Linen who is struggling and also a mistake and pulling up immediately is Rocky Creek who's out of the race it's Arkin who leads them over the fence before the Melling Road he's gone clear by a couple of lengths as the others stream over it and they go back towards the stand with Arkin out in front followed by Double Ross and then on the outside is St. R Back in fourth is the last Samurai, and then Many Clouds, who's had a good trip to this point. He certainly has. The field at the moment, though, being led by Arkin and Henry Brook having his fourth ride in the Grand National. Just slightly hampered, though, by the loose horse at that point. He's got him back on track, though, now. Arkin here with Double Ross on the inside. Same time last year's runner-up between them. And then close up behind is the last Samurai, followed by last year's winner. Many clouds and a handy fifth at this point. And then shut the front door, followed by Rule the World and Larev. Then Gil Gamboa and Pendra next ahead of Vix Canvas, who made that bad mistake. 
Sacred Beaches. Next in the field then is Katenko. Then came Valley Casey as they come towards the 13th fence. Arkansas is still the leader there over that. From Sentar in second, Double Ross in third. The last Samurai back in fourth and then shut the front door. Followed by Rule the Weld and Gil Gamboa. Sylvain Arco Conti is going to be pulled up before the 14th. Sylvain Arco Conti is out of the race as the rest of the field get over the 14th OK and now head the way towards the chair preceded by a loose horse. It's same time. Many clouds arc in the last samurai. Just ahead of shot the front door. Then came Rule the Weld and Gil Gamboa from Vix Canvas and Gal Tosca. Then Larev and behind these Gugliella as they take the chair now. Look at this back through the field. We've got a couple down at the back there. It looks like Sir Deshaun has gone at the chair and we've also got another one down on my own has gone as well. As they take the water, St. Tar just landed in the lead there. From Arkin in second, a bad mistake there from Black Thunder at the back of the field as St. Tar left the national field. From Many Clouds in second and Arkin back in third. Then came the red just in front of Double Ross and the last Samurai and shot the front door. Then came Vix Candice and Rule the Well from Gil Gamboa and Gallant Oscar then Gugliela Yuchero Conti and then Pendra followed by Triano Delane and Verleon Rouge. Cruz Linen is next on the inside and then came One Night in Vienna followed closely by Just a Par and then Union East and further back to Valley the Gore and wonderful charm of Valley Casey as they approach now the next the 17th. Same time out very wide with towards the inside many clouds and between them is the last Samurai and those will be the first three as they cross over the next and either same time made a mistake, Valley Casey made a mistake, Bywise made a mistake, uh, Home Farm is tailing off, the Druid's nephew is tailed off, Sol is struggling badly as they go over the next plane one, and it was the last Samurai, Many Clouds and St. Tar the first three, there was a very, very bad mistake by Gallant Oscar, whose rider is now about to be unseated before the next, which is the open ditch, and Many Clouds has jumped to the lead in the Grand National, over last Samurai took it in second, Ucello Conti made a mistake, Ballinagora and seats his rider back in the field as they go on now towards the next plane one and it's the last samurai in many clouds the first two followed by Le Rev, who's now making ground on the inside with Saint Ar next so many clouds as they run down towards the fence before Beaches alongside the last Samurai. Last year's runner Absentar is handy. Uh, then on the inside, Le Reb, followed over by Double Ross, who jumped up well. Rule the World is just behind the leader. Sol is pulled up. The Druid's nephew is being pulled up. Wonderful Charm has also been pulled up at the back of the field. The leaders make the run down towards Beaches. And it's the last Samurai from many clouds. Double Ross, Le Reb, Yerleon Rouge making a bit of ground on the inside. Vix Canvas. Leaders get over it safely. Uccello Conti making ground on the inside. Lost one towards the rear of the field. Katenko came down there as well. And also one night in Vienna. Arkin has been pulled up. Over the point Avon they go. Many clouds leading them as they now head towards the canal turn for the last Samurai. Vieux-Leon Rouge and Larev right behind the leaders with Vix Canvas. And Tar has lost a couple of positions. And then Double Ross and Rule the World and shut the front door. And Gil Gamboa, Uccello Conti and Morning Assembly out over the canal turn. The lead Let's go. They get over it safely. Triolo Delen makes a mistake. Uh, back in the field, Cruz Linen is last of those still going as the leaders now head towards Valentine's, led by many clouds. Black Thunder was another one who was pulled up. Home Farm has also been pulled up, and it is now the last Samurai who leads. Many clouds in second. Little Rev is in third. Vix Canvas now racing in fourth. Shut the front door is trying to make ground. The early on Ruse is next as they go over the next. And many clouds makes a bad mistake. Pulling up at the back of the field is Double Ross. A bad mistake when tailed off by Union. East. So it is now. The last Samurai. The one who's out very wide is Morning Assembly, who's right there on the premises as they go over the open ditch. And a bad mistake there. A shuddering error by Rule the World. Pulling up at the back of the field is Cruz Linens. So they've got three to jump in the Grand National. And the leader is the last Samurai. Two in second place, Vince Canvas. Many Clouds is on the inside. Morning Assembly towards their outside. They're then being followed by Gil Gamboa. The Grey Valley Casey is trying to make ground. Le Rev now begins to weaken as they cross over the Melling Road with two fences to take in the National. It's morning assembly towards the outside of the last Samurai and there, right on the inside, back in third, is Vix Canvas. So they're on the way towards two out in the National. The last Samurai with a small lead from out wide and morning assembly. Vix Canvas, the veteran, is right there with every chance but slightly squeezed up against the rail. Many Clouds is under pressure next and then came Gil Gamboa as they work down towards the penultimate fence and it's the last Samurai who shows the way under 
for David Bass from Vix Canvas Morning Assembly, Rule the World and Gil Gamboa. Then came Giacello Conti, followed by Many Clouds, who's hard under pressure. Then Verli on Rouge at two from the end. The last Samurai Rose, the leader from Vix Canvas in second, Rule the World back in third. Then Gil Gamboa, Bally Casey's gone in behind those at the second last as they come to the final fence. And Vix Canvas joins several now with the last Samurai over in third, Rule the World. Gil Gamboa in fourth, then Giacello Conti and Verli on Rouge. Now the running ahead of them. And Vix Canvas draws alongside the last Samurai. Rule the World is staying on to the outside. Gil Gamboa back in fourth. They approach the elbow three with a chance. Vix Canvas toward the rail. The last Samurai in the centre. And here's Rule the World on the outside. Who's coming home strongest of all. And it's Rule the World. The horse who's never previously won. The race over fancies. He's going to run the biggest one of them all here. Conti, Verli on Rouge, Morning Assembly shut the front door, then Union East, Le Rev and Bywise. What a dream day for young David Mullins. He has won the Grand National on his first attempt at the big race on Rule the World for Mouth Morris, who was so associated with the likes of the last of the Brownies back in the late 80s and early 90s. He hasn't yet had a Grand National winner, but he has now. In his second season, Novice Rule the World, second in the Irish National last season, now the winner of the 2016 Cravis Grand National. What a day for David Mullins. I bet he can hardly believe it. It was a fantastic finish. In second was the last samurai for David Bass and Kim Bailey, running really well this progressive horse, and David Bass must have thought at one point that he'd got the race run. And a huge run also from Vix Canvas for Dermot McLaughlin, who was having his first runner in the race. Robbie Dermot was having his first ride in the race. And it was those three that fought out what was a thrilling finish. Wasn't it? Just three in line coming to the elbow. And, uh, well, in the end, he, the maiden no more. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and it was a, it was an old-fashioned Grand National in many ways, including replete with the worry about the elbow and are they all going to get round it? I said that watching it with Jonathan, he went the right angle, didn't he? He had a straight line at you. I, I think for one minute, oh no, please don't go left bear the uh, the horse in third. But in the end, he's really stayed, hasn't he? And that was that was hard work today. That was really hard work. He's a thorough stayer. Yes, he really is. He's He's toughed it out really well, and as you say, David Mellon's got the angle really right for the elbow. He went round it with no problem, and he looms up on the outside of the last samurai and goes past him like a horse with a huge amount of stamina. Uh, I think in fourth it's Gil Blambo who's stuck on the fourth, isn't it? I think it might be. I mean, the, the runner-up has been there right from the start, and the third I was all but down at Beach his first time round. I couldn't believe that he was still being called there. Well, Michael O'Leary, as you can tell, said has won a Gold Cup, and now they've won a Grand National. He is with Tom. Michael, you've won the Grand National. How does that feel? It's just unbelievable. I think it's wonderful for Mouse, you know, from, uh, to you know, do an Irish National and then uh, the Grand National here. It's just it's an unspeakable achievement, particularly with this horse. He's had two broken pelvises over the years. Um, and David Mullins, who's ridden his first, his first time in the National, to win the National on your first go, he gave him a peach of a ride. Um, I just... I can't believe it. It's and he incredible. just dug in so deep, so deep, what he was needing. To be fair, like, he's always been that great steer. He's just been unlucky. He was second in Irish National. He fell in the Galway place, coming to the second last last year. He's been an amazing horse, but what a trainer Mouse is. You know, he doesn't have a big number of horses, but when he gets them there on the day, you know, they tend to perform extraordinarily well. I'm delighted for Mouse. I, you know, he's had a difficult year. I think this will be the cream on top. I mean, most people grow up sort of dreaming of Grand National victory. When it arrives, how does it feel? Unbelievable? I, I don't know what to feel. I think mean, I'm numb. I mean, I, genuinely, we didn't think I'd, I thought I had no chance in it. You know, uh, never thought we'd, I mean, I wanted to win a Gold Cup. And I, uh, I, it was beyond dreams that we'd ever win a Grand National. And to win a Gold Cup, a Grand National, and an Irish National in one year. I think I should now stop because it's not going to get any better than this. <laughs> no, very well done. That's great. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, I doubt he will stop. And why should he? It's been a fantastic season.
season uh, for Michael O'Leary and the Jig and Sand Stud. And it's her first success in the race for Maz Morris. Last of the Brownies, Attitude Adjuster. These were the horses that I grew up enjoying in the Grand National. Yeah, it wasn't it just? And uh, not even wearing the first colour hat either. <laughs> And he's got the, the banner of success around him. And what a day for David Mullins. Yeah, fantastic. And he gave it a fantastic ride. He was actually still being really patient from yeah. two out. We taped some bottle. And he was, you could see that he was going well in behind him. And he waited till the running to really let him go. Uh, he's the son of trainer Tom Mullins, of course, and the nephew of uh, Willie Mullins. <laughs> in, in the Winston 